ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن سار على نهج ومستن بسنته الى يوم الدين اما بعد فاتقوا الله ايها الاحباب فقد امرنا سبحانه وتعالى في تنزيله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ثم اما بعد first and foremost my brothers and sisters not only is this a blessed day or a blessed hour of the day of Jum'ah, but it is also a joyous day and a happy day of Eid al-Fitr. And first and foremost, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this wonderful blessing and opportunity to experience both Eid al-Fitr as well as Yawm al-Jum'ah in the same day. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept from us our fast, to accept from us the Qur'an and the prayers that we had devoted to and we had struggled with in the blessed month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to count us from amongst those who on the Day of Judgment, count us amongst those who are part of that special group, special category of people who will enter through a door of Jannah. Out of all the many doors of paradise, we only know the name of one. And it just so happens to be the door where the people who fasted will enter and have their place in paradise. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to count us from amongst those who will enter Ba'ab or Rayyan. Allahumma ameen. Ayyuhal Ahbab, a look ahead. Where do we go from here? I'm sure a lot of speakers, a lot of lecturers have given you some insight and things that you and I should be thinking about, should, it, should be involved with, in order that we can sustain and keep the momentum, keep the energy, the spirit, the love and the dedication that all of us exemplified in the month of Ramadan. If you thought to yourself prior to Ramadan that you couldn't go above and beyond the five daily prayers, and then Jum'ah, and then the Sunnah prayers, if you thought that that was your limit. But in Ramadan, not only did you do all of those things, but you were here for Taraweeh. And if you missed Taraweeh, you prayed some additional rak'at at home. And your witr was more consistent. And because of the suhoor, it helped you and it encouraged you to remain until the Salatul Fajr. So if you struggled to pray Fajr on time, but in Ramadan, it was okay. Take this as a sign, as a blessing from our Creator, that all of us have what it takes to go, and, to go above and beyond the standard by which you may think you belong in. You have what it takes to go above and beyond and do the extra things that will count you amongst those who will receive the additional reward and the additional blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an amazing, amazing thing to think about of how all of our brothers and sisters in that blessed month, how we came together. No one had anything awful to say. We came together, we had iftar together, we fasted together, this Ummah really and truly felt like the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So how do we keep that as we move forward? 
post Ramadan? The answer, ayyuhal ahbab, are many. But the one that I want to share with you today is I want to bring you back to Surah Al Baqarah. I want to bring you all back to the page in which all the khatibs and lecturers pre Ramadan they were reminding you of the verses of Ramadan. Every lecturer and speaker would be quoting to you these verses. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam until the end. That O oh, people of Iman, Allah has prescribed for you fasting just like He has done for those who came before us that perhaps we can attain some level of consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we have seen that, tasted it, and inshallah, we have received it. We got the consciousness and the taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to receive in the month of Ramadan, bi'idhnillah. The next verse, ayyaman ma'dudat. You know, this part of the verse could not be more true today. I think we can all agree that this Ramadan, I think all of us for the most part can agree that this Ramadan is one of those Ramadans that we will never forget how quickly it came and how quickly it has gone. It's left us so quickly. I don't know if this is a good thing or not, but one thing I do know is when you start to feel as though 24 hours a day is not enough, when you start to feel like five days in the week is not enough to do the things that we need to do, then remember what our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam reminded us of. He told us that there will come a time where a year will feel like a month. A month will feel like a few days. Few days will feel like hours. And when that happens, when we start to live in a culture where time just seems like it's never enough, our Prophet والسلام, told us, be ready because the day of judgment is near. May Allah Azza wa give us strength. Really makes you think that this feeling is not just happening by chance. 24 hours probably feels like a couple of hours, but you and I know it's still 24 hours. None of that has changed. But this culture and this feeling of what each and every day becomes must be a reminder for all of us that we are running out of time. In this month of Ramadan, again, this is something personal I want to share with you, but some of you probably have experienced something similar. This Ramadan was the one Ramadan that I can recall that I have heard more bad news than, in, than ever before in my life. More people becoming sick, tested and trialed with difficulty and hardship. More of our brothers and sisters close to us and throughout the Muslim world suddenly losing their life, suddenly passing away. And you're thinking to yourself, it's just happening and occurring more and more. May Allah Azzawajal bless them and count them from the righteous in this world and give them the best in the Akhirah. Allahumma ameen. Think about your brothers and sisters, whether that be in Palestine, in Syria, in Burma, wherever. More and more people are either becoming sick or they are passing away suddenly. And if that's not the case, just look around towards the simple things that we might often take for granted, like the weather, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that one of the signs of the Day of Judgment 
is you'll start to experience that natural disasters will increase, not just by number, but intensity. They will start to cause more and more damage. And more and more of these natural disasters will be unexplainable. No one will understand why this happened the way that it did. And doesn't it feel like this is already the case? All you have to do is just look on the news and you see for yourself so much unfolding around the world. Our Prophet والسلام, told us that there will come a time where khushur or concentration, focus in our prayers will become something more and more difficult to experience. People will start to lose the focus in their prayers more and more and more. When this starts happening, prepare because the day, the sa'ah, is near. One great scholar about 20, 25 years ago would say that this ummah, we are standing in front of the doors of the day of judgment, and we are knocking those doors. And so this is the moment, this is the time where when Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Baqarah that Ramadan is ayyaman ma'dudat. Ma'dudat comes from the word ma'duda. And ma'duda means something that is minuscule. Like it's so petty, it's so little, you won't even bother counting it. That's called ma'dudat. Allah is saying to you and I that Ramadan is just a few days. It'll come and it'll just go. Then as it continue, as you continue reading about Ramadan, the next verse, Allah said, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. This was the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the Qur'an. But as you continue reading, in the middle of that verse, Allah said something very beautiful. He tells us, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرُ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرُ Allah wants for you ease, and Allah does not want for you hardship or difficulty. In Surah Al-Hajj, Allah took those two points and put it into one sentence. وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ He never wanted to create any form of discomfort for you when it came to this religion. Scholars, they teach us and they tell us, if at any point you feel that the obligations of Islam is becoming difficult and it becomes a burden on you, the first thing that a believer should do is realize that he or she is struggling with their faith. It's a sign that you're struggling with Iman. Because part of faith is to enjoy and find peace and tranquility when you fulfill the commands of your Creator. That should be the most comforting and beautiful experience. Yes, there is some element of hardship in it, but we look forward to coming to the masjid at 10.30 at night and pray until one o'clock in the morning. We look forward to that. And then we had a few hours, few hours maybe to rest, maybe most of us didn't, and before you know it, suhoor. Suhoor comes around, fajr, and there it goes again, you start the same cycle. But the iman in you is so peaceful and so content, it finds joy and pleasure that they are making these sacrifices for their creator. If we lose that, it is a sign that our faith needs some work. It needs to be strengthened. But here's what I want to share with you today. When Allah Azza wa Jal says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرُ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرُ Now we are going to see the real meaning and truth behind this statement. Fasting in Ramadan was not so bad. 
try fasting one day outside of Ramadan and see if that's not the most impossible thing to do. These six days of Sha'aban, think about how easy or how difficult it might be. And how many of our brothers and sisters, they have the intention, but they just can't muster up the discipline to do it. It's not easy. May Allah Azza wa Jal make it easy for all of us. Allahumma ameen. Now when all is said and done, here is our responsibility after Ramadan, looking ahead. Comes right from Surah Al-Baqarah. When Allah finished talking about Ramadan, this beautiful verse came. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ This ayah, this verse puts it all together what we should be feeling and experiencing and looking forward to in post Ramadan. Allah Azza wa Jal now tells us, He brings to our attention an incident that happened with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A man came to him and asked him something about Allah. This man came to the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam to ask him something that was related to Allah Azza wa Jal. Before the Prophet ﷺ could respond, who took over the conversation? It was Allah Azza wa Jal. He tells us, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ When this man came to talk to you and ask you, سُؤَالٌ سَأَلَ He asked you something. Who answered the question? Allah now takes over the conversation and says, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ He didn't say, فَقُلْ لَهُ إِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Say to him that I am near. Allah takes over the conversation and says, I am near. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ What does that mean? Scholars, they explain to us that the qurba of Allah, this closeness of Allah, is Allah's protection and knowledge over His creation. Allah is paying special attention, especially to those in post Ramadan, especially that category of brothers and sisters and servants who have gone through the spiritual exercise and discipline of Ramadan, you now have Allah's undivided attention. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us and honor us. Allahumma ameen. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ He says, I am close to you. What, is Allah, what does Allah want you to think about? أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ He answers the call of the caller whenever they call. Listen to the words carefully. Arabic students, you will love this verse. You will appreciate it so much. Because the word that Allah uses to describe the caller, He calls that individual Ad-da'i, not Da'i, not anonymous. The Alif Lam is attached to this word. What does that mean? It means that now this person, this individual is somebody that is known to Allah. He is not or she is not just a person, she or he is now the person. SubhanAllah. How did we get that honor? Because you called on Allah. What is the one thing we have been doing the most when we are not in prayer, when we are not in Quran, what are we doing the most? As our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, the dua of the Sa'im is never rejected. So we were praying and making dua to him throughout. Now is the time, whether you are fasting or not, 
Now you and I, insha'Allah, have become strong candidates of dua and achieving and receiving the response to our dua. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept our duas. Allahumma ameen. Ujibu da'wat al da'i idha da'an. Falyastajibu li. Allah wants two things from us. Number one, falyastajibu li. Answer Allah's request. What was Allah's call to you and I? It was all those verses that came before. Achieve taqwa. Take the month seriously. Follow all the rules and obligations. Busy your time with Quran. Once you do all of that, then you have response. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Number two, Allah says, وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي Have faith in me. Doesn't mean to have iman with Allah. The faith that is talking about here is faith that we already have. Strengthen that bond with you and your Creator. Keep it now consistent. How are we going to do that? Go back to the beginning of the verse. Keep talking to Allah. That is the core lesson of Ramadan. We have been speaking to Him throughout Ramadan. Now Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to do it more and more. And every time you do it, He is near you and He is anxious to give you the response. But you have to have faith in Him and answer His call to follow this deen as best as you can. What is la'allahum yarshudun? This is what we conclude with in the second part of the khutbah. Ayyu al ahbab, on this blessed day, this wonderful, joyous day, this blessed hour of Jum'ah, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept our efforts in the month of Ramadan. Ya Rabbi, only you know, only you know my weaknesses. And only you know my strengths. Ya Rabbi, accept from me the efforts I have put forth in Ramadan and forgive me of my shortcomings and my weaknesses in the month of Ramadan. Ya Rabbi, we ask you to cause us amongst those who will continue a life of submission, commitment, and obedience to you, Ya Rabb. Ya Allah, we ask you to accept from us our call, accept from us our dua. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa risa'il muslimina min kulli dham fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala ahlihi wa ashabihi wa man wa ala. Falyastajibu li wal yu'minu bi la'allahum yarshudun. Perhaps that insha'Allah, they will become amongst those who are yarshudun. Yarshudun comes from the word rashada. And it means to be put on the correct path or direction. You know, if, you, if you're driving and you have two options, they're both good options, but you want to find the option that is best for you at that moment, that's called rashada or yarshudun. So you are asking Allah Azza wa Jal, Oh Allah, don't just make me the Muslim that does the bare minimum. Ya Allah, I want to be the best. I want to go above and beyond. I want to give you more because this is what I learned and I experienced in Ramadan. Oh Allah, guide me so that for the rest of my time, I am not doing the bare minimum, but I'm striving above and beyond for you, Ya Rabb. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to count us from amongst them. Allahumma ameen. This in a nutshell is our responsibility moving forward that we continue to speak to our Creator. And when we speak to Him, He guarantees all of us that He is close to you. And when Allah is close to you, there is no danger in this world that can come near you. But Allah tells you to have that, to experience that, have faith in Him, 
follow him, follow what he told us to do, and insha'Allah ta'ala, Allah will guide us to what is best. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept from us our sacrifice. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept from us our efforts. Ya Rabbi, accept from us our dua, accept from us our siyam, our qiyam, our ruku'ah, our sujood, our dua, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We send peace and blessings to the Rasul Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamuhu Alay. Kama Amarana Subhanahu wa Ta'ala fi Tanzili. Inna Allah wa Mala ikatahu yu salun ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Salu alayhi wa salimu taslima.